Thank you very much, uh, Greg, uh, for uh, the introduction, and I would like to thank uh, the organizers for uh, this uh, very nice uh, event. Uh, I have a big difficulty because uh, uh, I'm out of my comfort zone, as uh, Greg just explained, uh, not because of the IP side of the uh, paper, but because of the agriculture. Uh, side of uh, of uh, the paper, I work for many years on uh, intellectual property in electrical technologies, and um, only recently with uh, Kiryaki Klokiti uh, we started uh, looking at uh, agricultural transitions, uh, law, science, and technology interrelations, and uh, we start uh, very recently to look at the uh, role of um, intellectual property uh, broad defined uh, in the setting of uh, Greece. Um, we look about, in this paper we look on transition, so it's a big uh, narrative, 1920-2015. We will give um, an overview, unfortunately uh, Kiryaki uh, had to, uh, uh, to stay in uh, Greece and uh, send her regards. Uh, um, Let's hope that uh, I will represent here in the best way. So, this is the overview of uh, the paper. Uh, I will give uh, an overview of the IP regime in uh, Greece, 1920-1987, uh, uh, then move to agriculture and plant breeding, uh, particularly uh, looking at, uh, at how an industry, let's say, innovate without patents, because there is no patents uh, on, on plants in, in Greece. But there are, uh, there are laws that can function uh, in a way in this IP broad uh, concept. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, practically we, will, uh, we, we are looking at the transition from 1920 to uh, the mid-1980s. Uh, we find common characteristics in that transition, and then we find that the 80s was the uh, important turning, let's say, period. Uh, why? Because of the Europeanization and of Greece, and the integration of Greece in, in uh, Europe, and there we will see how this changed the rules of the game. <clears throat> So our approach is very uh, uh, into this IP broad uh, concept that Greg, uh, the, the, the child of, of Greg, uh, and uh, we try to push uh, the concept of standardization as a way of thinking uh, on uh, along IP broad uh, terms. And in this uh, respect, uh, we think that uh, the distinction or the terms uh, that used by, the, by sociologists of science, Lenzau, uh, the delimitation and demarcation, where delimitation is how an object is defined in the law, and demarcation how, how this uh, through different uh, bureaucratic uh, procedures, uh, the object became bureaucratically unambiguous and analytically uh, distinct. Um, so we look on how standardization can be thought as IP uh, broad in this uh, aspect. Uh, intellectual property regime in Greece, two major, uh, let's say, uh, dates, 1920, the first patent law in, in uh, Greece. What was happening before? But there were patents, but patents as privileges, eh? as ad hoc uh, bills that were passed uh, by the parliament and uh, with no patent law. So 1920, uh, the first patent law under the pressure, uh, because of the pressures of Europeans, but also because at that uh, moment uh, the uh, centrist and liberal uh, government played the card of modernization of Greece, 1920. And the Venizelos uh, uh, government, and in that aspect, new legislative measures, uh, the patent, uh, patent law was included, were uh, introduced. Uh, so, the new uh, patent law of 1920, but still uh, we have this transition from patent as privilege to patent as, as rights, but not global rights, not 
universal rights. So a fragmented transition for Greece in what uh, Mario Biazzoli says uh, that uh, with the new liberal uh, democracies and the new constitutions uh, of the 18th and 19th century, we have the transition from uh, patents as rights, uh, patents as privilege to patents as rights. But in Greece it was fragmented and this is completely completed in 1987 with a new law uh, where uh, the provision of the universal uh, criteria of novelty, uh, novelty in Greece, novelty in, in Europe, novelty uh, all around uh, 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 the world were, were enforced uh, in uh, Greece mainly under the influence of WIPO and the, patent, the European Patent Office. So this is the broad, uh, uh, broad view about the patents and patent law in, uh, in Greece. As I said, in uh, agriculture we have chemical uh, pesticides and fertilizers that uh, were patented, mechanical engineering uh, appliances and machines were patented, um, processes, processes of how to, to make better uh, oil or how to make uh, 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 better, let's say, uh, juice, uh, but not for, uh, for, uh, plan, uh, for plants. Um, how this industry uh, was uh, evolved uh, uh, was evolved then. Uh, the early uh, attempts for a systematized plant breeding uh, we can find in 1920s uh, under the leadership of this uh, chap uh, Ioannis uh, Papadakis, uh, uh, an, ag an agronomist and en an engineer uh, who studied in uh, Belgium. Uh, he was the founder of the first institute of plant varieties uh, and uh, improvement of plant varieties in uh, Thessaloniki and uh, there he conducted a series of uh, experiments for many years from 1931 to 1946 uh, when uh, he moved uh, to Latin America and worked with the Argentine uh, government. Um, as I said, Papadakis attempt was the first systematized plant uh, breeding because um, he conducted uh, a, a, system, uh, a system, systematized uh, experiment, but also he played an important role uh, with uh, the government and the new uh, legislation. Here we can see him uh, with, uh, uh, in the fields uh, around uh, the institute, uh, experimenting uh, in the famous buckets uh, experiments uh, with uh, wheat, new varieties of uh, wheat. He started uh, with imported uh, plant uh, varieties and uh, from Italy, Australia and uh, Germany and uh, started very uh, in the 30s he started to uh, let's say create uh, his own uh, plant uh, variety and we will see uh, what exactly and how he did that. Um, Papadakis uh, supported plant science-based plant varieties, uh, both imported or created in uh, the Institute. Um, he argued uh, that uh, imported seed uh, varieties produce, uh, increase the productivity. Uh, also, um, he argued that improved wheat varieties uh, uh, produce quality flour, didn't uh, damage the, the soil, and also for him, monoculture uh, was an asset to a declining uh, and problematic uh, country uh, in the interwar uh, period. So she <clears throat> Uh, uh, she supported the use of uh, new plant uh, varieties and uh, she played the card there uh, and she influenced uh, the uh, Metaxas dictatorial uh, regime and uh, she played a role in uh, the first law of 1937 on plant breeding and seed uh, production. It was the first law uh, that uh, introduce a central committee, new institutions, for the management of uh, information and for planning uh, seed uh, production and plant uh, breeding, but also institute uh, the registry, 
the mitron, as it's called, of great plant varieties of cereals and, uh, and uh, fodders. And also, he, this legislation gave research uh, institutes, scientific uh, institutes, a prominent role because uh, made them uh, uh, very important, v very important institutions in the whole uh, system, and responsible for providing the improved uh, seeds. So, agricultural uh, uh, research institutes, particularly the institute that led by uh, Papadakis, m became a very important uh, institution. In this context. Uh, his own creation, uh, the so-called number, um, a, a, a plant variety uh, that produced by the hybridization of reality and quality uh, in experiments that he started in 1934. Uh, and uh, uh, introduced for seed production in 1942, uh, became and acquired a symbolic uh, role as the plant variety that sort out the problem of uh, of uh, wheat uh, autarky uh, of uh, of uh, Greece. So, by this symbolic uh, role uh, and by promoting, let's say. Uh, uh, plant varieties, improved plant, plant varieties, uh, Papadakis secured his role uh, as a plant breeder, but also secured a role for the uh, institution. It is indicative that, that uh, some years later, another uh, another uh, director of the same uh, institute said that, uh, look, he, he played uh, the same card with uh, a new variety, the variety Victory, and uh, Burgonas, uh, George Burgonas, argued to the another colonial uh, regime, another dictatorship uh, in uh, the 1969, that Victory will uh, promote uh, scientific plant uh, breeding and victory will, uh, let's say, uh, salvage uh, Greece uh, from uh, the uh, problem of uh, food and uh, wheat uh, production. So it was uh, using scientific plant uh, breeding uh, was a part of the whole agenda of legitimizing their role as plant breeders, but also institutions, uh, their institutions, as obligatory passing, uh, passage points uh, that both the farmers and the government had to pass through in order uh, to, uh, to uh, let's say, find their way in the industry. Um, <clears throat> so, the institutions played an important role uh, in starting in the interwar period and increased this, uh, uh, their uh, role in the uh, 1970s and up to 1980s. New varieties were introduced in uh, seed production, con state controlled seed production and uh, distribution. And, as we say here, um, and this was uh, a, a card that was played both by colonial regime and also conservative uh, governments. They played the card of scientific, uh, scientific plant uh, breeding, stained uh, control uh, that through standardized procedures uh, secured by the institutes will increase productivity and uh, and this will improve the economic situation of, of uh, Greece. Uh, so <clears throat> it was all this, uh, all this period that without having IP, uh, through this emphasis on standardization, that uh, the state could have, uh, let's say, um, a, a plant breeding, scientific-based uh, uh, plant breeding. So, <clears throat> when this starts, uh, when this changes, this changes uh, practically this emphasis on state that plan and control the whole industry through its uh, institutes. Uh, it changes with the uh, 1564 uh, law of uh, 1985. Uh, this was a law 
that uh, introduced um, introduced certificates for plant creation, introduced rights for plant uh, breeders, introduced uh, new institutions like national catalog of cultivated plant, and also institute the Variety Research Institute of Cultivated Plants as the institute that could uh, control the registration of new varieties, the continuation of the varieties on the national catalog, and control the maintenance. This approach, <coughs> this approach changed at that moment under the influence of European Union. Uh, Greece had to compile, had, had to harmonize with EU, uh, uh, EU uh, legislation and this came through also a, a new political uh, economy that reduced the emphasis on state planning, state control and uh, increased the emphasis of private sector players and stakeholders. As we can see here that once this change, the private sector pop in and uh, practically control the uh, plant, uh, uh, plant breeding, uh, plant varieties, uh, both in strong wheat, uh, cotton, and sugar uh, beet. Uh, so <clears throat> by open up issues of uh, rights and change from uh, the, the, the plants from goods to to uh, uh, to uh, property. Uh, then the private sector uh, acquired momentum and also played a more uh, important uh, role in driving uh, the industry. There, the the uh, the governments and the state gave emphasis on how to control this uh, procedure and they are the technical regulations for the production of uh, the, and the, uh, for the production and the trade of seed became important tool for the state in order to control uh, uh, to control uh, knowledge flows to control uh, material flows uh, in that uh, 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 seed uh, industry were there different approach? Were there were different approach, but only very uh, marginal uh, approach. And one very important, uh, uh, let's say, marginal alternative uh, uh, approach uh, came in 1995 um, from the alternative community of Peliti, a grassroots innovation paradigm that started uh, with an emphasis on uh, conserving and, secure and uh, saving, let's say, local traditional breeds. And um, it was, Peliti was against IP uh, plant varieties uh, supported uh, the view that decentralized ownership of uh, knowledge in relation to blood breeding as a requirement for the democratization of seed and food production, decentralization as alternative political economy of seeds and safety requirements for the deconstruction of the control of food by a small number of private interests. Um, it is important to stress here, and I'm finishing uh, uh, very shortly, that for Peliti, for the community of Peliti, which is a network of uh, communities uh, now uh, controlling uh, uh, around uh, uh, 100 uh, farmers, uh, farms in, in around uh, Greece, standardization uh, is uh, based on trust. Trust to farmers and plant breeders who are members of the community or work with the, uh, the network, quality and purification control through networks of trust, uh, the seeds bear and circulate with the name of the plant breeder. So it is uh, all everything about the trust to the plant breeder rather than to the uh, artifact, to the, uh, the, 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 the seed uh, per se. Um, so to conclude, uh, to, 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 to conclude, 
the period of 1920-1980, the emphasis was on sovereignty and autarky. Uh, there were, there were uh, six years of scientific rationalism uh, as it was promoted as an ideology by plant breeders uh, like Papadakis. Um, state plant and control plant breeding, plant breeding outside uh, proprietary regime, but or within a regime of IP brought through, uh, uh, let's say, laws uh, that uh, uh, made clear the whole process of standardization. So standardization as a way to accreditation of plant varieties and public goods. The 80s um, emerged this soft proprietary uh, regime uh, with uh, the acknowledgement of plant breeders' uh, rights, a new political economy in the Greek agriculture towards liberalization and Europeanization, and the emergence of some very marginal, uh, I need to say, alternative uh, paradigms of grassroots innovations, like Peliti, the Peliti community, uh, that were based on different political economy, based on gift economy and standardization through trust to farmers rather than, rather than to uh, the Brits. And with this, I would like to thank you very much. Thank you.